Good morning. I urge you to find your seats. Uh, my name is Stephen Strauss. I'm the director of the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, and I have the pleasure of hosting the tenth in the series now of our distinguished lectures in the science of complementary and alternative medicine. And our speaker today, uh, I'll say unreservedly, is quite a phenomenon. Uh, Bruce Rosen is a professor at Harvard uh, with training at that uh, technical school downriver we both know as well, MIT. Uh, rose to be chair of radiology at Harvard and is head of the Martinos Center for Biomedical Imaging. And the reason that my colleagues and I have been excited to have Bruce down again, we've had the pleasure of hosting Bruce here before uh, for other meetings, uh, is to talk to us about application of some of the most extraordinary, and I think you'll agree, even um, surprising imaging findings that reveal to us the nature of acupuncture and some of its neurobiological mechanisms. Here we have a venerable practice that's 2,500 years old, that's laden with mystery, uh, skepticism, uh, implications of magic, whatever it is. Within the last 30 years, science has begun to seriously explore the, the basis for acupuncture. Um, and the NIH actually funded its first grant for acupuncture research in 1972. And here we are 34 years later, harvesting all of the insights and now capturing a great many more with new technology. Dr. Rosen is going to talk to us about his use of functional magnetic resonance imaging and pharmacological magnet magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission tomography to teach us about what actually happens in the brain when a needle is inserted peripherally that somebody a couple of thousands of years ago associated with some clinical phenomenon. Join me in welcoming Dr. Bruce Rosen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And be sure you turn on your mic. I think we're, uh, are we live? Great. Uh, thank you, Dr. Strauss, so much for, for that uh, uh, very uh, undeserved uh, uh, and very kind of uh, welcome. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, and an honor to be here. I did have a chance to look through uh, the uh, website to see some of the previous distinguished lecturers, and uh, uh, I'm not quite uh, sure how it is that I found my own way uh, onto this uh, company. I see a number of uh, very uh, familiar and friendly faces in the audience, and those of you who know me uh, might be scratching your heads about the title of this talk uh, the same way I've been uh, as I've been uh, preparing for it. Uh, of course, uh, I'm uh, by no means uh, an expert uh, in acupuncture, never have practiced it, uh, and uh, as a, a radiologist and physicist, really couldn't be considered a neurobiologist either. Um, so uh, to some extent, uh, what I'll be doing today is uh, sharing with you uh, my own journey as I've been learning about acupuncture and learning about its biology uh, through uh, my interactions with uh, some very uh, talented uh, and energetic uh, colleagues uh, that span uh, probably uh, you know 40 decades of uh, 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 or four decades of experience. Well, um, uh, why uh, am I here today uh, to talk to you, and what are we here to uh, to accomplish? Um, we certainly know that acupuncture is uh, increasing its utilization uh, here in the United States. Uh, and as was uh, just introduced to us, has been in practice in other parts of the world uh, literally for thousands of years. Uh, and yet, we still uh, have a very incomplete understanding of the uh, basic scientific foundation that supports uh, the use of acupuncture. So ultimately, of course, we'd really like to understand how acupuncture works. Well, that's nice, but it turns out uh, at some level, of course, 
uh, some will question uh, whether uh, acupuncture works or not. And we, of course, ultimately like to have enough of an understanding of the underlying biology to both answer the how and maybe give us some insight as to the whether or perhaps more appropriately the when it works. It raises an interesting question as we begin to think about studying acupuncture. There are some, of course, that would say that it doesn't really make sense to study the mechanism of something before its efficacy is fully understood. Uh, others might say that without an understanding of a potential mechanism, we really can't begin to design the studies uh, uh, to look at efficacy uh, most appropriately. Uh, and I guess uh, in the end of the day, uh, we've decided uh, to split the difference and try to uh, answer uh, both questions uh, 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 in an interactive way.